Hey guys, JNM here and this is finally a multi-resolution sculpting tutorial for Blender 2.9. And as an example I used the X model again and will add the bandages now that are wrapped around the handle of the X. I press Shift and A and add the cylinder to the scene. I move it a bit upwards along the handle and then I switch to edit mode and face selection. Select the face at the top and the bottom and then delete the faces by pressing the delete key. And that's the outer shape that we can scale, rotate and move so that it lines up with the wood handle. This is the first part and we will have four of them in the end. It doesn't have to be perfect, just align it as good as possible. And then you can switch to edge selection and select the upper and the lower edge loop and scale it so that it matches the radius of the handle. Ok, now I rename this to bandage here in the outliner. And then I go again to edit mode and add some thickness. There are many ways to do this, I choose to extrude along normals. I select the tool and then I just drag a bit this gizmo. Ok, then I press S again and scale it a bit, then S followed by Z to scale it along the Z axis. And that's a good start, I think. The next step is to add some bevels for the outer edges. Because my goal is to add a multi-resolution modifier, but I don't want to lose the shape of this mesh, but I also want to smooth it. One way to do this is to add kind of supporting edges, what I do by adding here these bevels. This is the kind of base mesh and I don't want to destroy it and this would happen when I voxel remesh it. But instead of this I add now a multi-resolution modifier and then I subdivide the mesh which also increases the density of the geometry. But we can always return to the lower subdivision levels and this makes it non-destructive. I subdivide up to 5 levels and you see this is really smooth and dense but we still have the crisp edges because of the bevels that we added. But still we can go to edit mode and see the low poly mesh. Ok, but now you could say when you change the mesh now in sculpt mode, for instance by using the grab brush, then the base mesh, the lowest level of subdivision, is again out of sync and we can't reuse it as a base mesh. But that's wrong and I will show you why. I switch to sculpt mode and enable this option, sculpt base mesh. What does it mean? First I reduce the number of subdivisions in sculpt mode, so that we have less resolution but still more than the base mesh. And then I use the grab brush and move around the mesh. I want to align it to the handle, so that it is really wrapped around it. And this can be done nicely using the subdivision level, but I want the base mesh to be adjusted as well. And this is exactly what happens when I check the option sculpt base mesh. Ok, I speed up a bit and finish this task of aligning and then we can have a look at the base mesh. Ok, now it is nicely wrapped around the handle and what I do now is I tap again to edit mode and then you see the base mesh is adjusted accordingly. And this is a great advantage because we don't have to do retopology, we can bake later on the high poly details that we add to the mesh in a higher subdivision level to the low poly mesh. Ok, now let's go ahead and duplicate this mesh in edit mode so that we have more bandages that still belong to the same object. And for each duplicated mesh I change the rotation and scale, align it roughly to the handle. And of course the multi-resolution modifier is used for each part, because the parts belong to the same object. Ok, now speed this up again, it's all the same for every part, for every mesh that I duplicated. I just scale, rotate and move. Ok, that's it, now I return to sculpt mode. And again I use the grab brush to align it to the handle. 
And when you do this, be sure to have this option for the brush checked, auto mask for the topology. Because then you just move the parts of the topology that you hit when you start the grab with the brush. That's very comfortable when you have topology that is overlapping. Now everything is aligned properly and I tap again to edit mode and you see that the base mesh is adjusted as well. Okay, and now it's time to add the first details and I use the inflate brush to inflate outer parts and kind of deflate inner parts, but I have to uncheck sculpt base mesh for this. And you can do this because the changes for the base mesh are not that significant. All right, these were the first details and I want to add finer details. So go to the highest subdivision level, which is level five. We could go even higher, but I think five is enough. And again, be sure to disable sculpt base mesh. And now switch to my tablet to add stylized edges using the scrape brush or small damages by using the clay strips. I speed this up now a bit, it's the same as we did in previous parts, just add details for the edges with the scrape brush to create this stylized look and feel. And for other parts I use brushes like draw sharp or clay strips, just to add small damages to make the mesh look more believable and natural.
Okay, I think that's enough. We can go to edit mode and you see the base mesh nicely adjusted and low poly. And of course we can always go to a different subdivision level. Enable again sculpt base mesh and adjust the topology. So I hope this non-destructive workflow was explained understandable by me. If you like the video and my channel then don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on my Instagram, Twitter or Facebook, support me by being my patron. If you have any questions add these to the comments below and I see you in the next one here on JNM.